Well, the BRAC, we brought you part one of doctors detained. Well, the seven doctors jailed this year for contempt of court during their 100 day doctor strike, told of their shock and disbelief at the life they found behind bars. Now, to part two of that exclusive piece with none other than Dr. Marcy Courier. I was expecting I would be given some, you know, some private room. Uh, well, I could do every other thing, but then now in terms of uh, uh, the real sleeping arrangement, it would have been different. But I was shocked. When the door was finally opened, I was ushered into a hall where all the inmates are. And uh, they were asleep. Did they get a good night's sleep? I didn't sleep. I think by the time I, I got to sleep, it was almost 4 a.m. And the warden came, kept coming and knocking, like, are you OK? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Um, I think it was a way of me trying to adjust. The night was so long, I must say. The, the night in a segregation room was so long, and I kept on contemplating about my life, about uh, the move, did it worth it? And I already found myself into it. And then I have to face it. I just slept the following day, and I woke up at 5. Or... It was okay. It didn't feel that bad. In there, there were ladies who were sleeping on the floor. But I think I'd have rather slept on the floor. Because the spaces in between the bed were so wide, so it felt like you're sinking in. So you feel like the, 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 the wire is cutting through you. And because the mattress is so thin, almost one inch thick. So you, you're, it's, it's better to sleep on the floor than sleep on the bed. But really, this is the first time I have peace and I got good sleep. I mean, as bad as the condition was, as thin as that mattress was, I got good sleep. That night I didn't sleep. The mattress I was given and the blanket, I sat on them the whole night. The first night I arrived, we were given gideri, boiled gideri. And the entire time before, I never used to take gideri because when I take that gideri, the beans would make would be very acidic and it would make me very sick. So I took Kideri for supper, slept. By morning, I was actually very sick, I was vomiting. Their memorable moments came during interactions with their fellow prisoners. A lady gave me a headscarf, I didn't have a headscarf, but she felt, no, she removed the one she had on her head and gave it to me. She felt, no, you can't sleep like that. And I was wondering, but why? They told me, you see this room here? It's our bedroom. It's our toilet, it's our kitchen, it's our sitting room. We do everything here. So we have to make sure it's very clean. I remember that I met one of the white guy in Ruiru who had been in prison for 30 years. So when I told, when I told him that um, I'm here for 30 days, he just told me that um, I'm just there for hours. Eh? Most of them could not believe that we were actually, we were actually in prison. Number two, they said uh, they admired what we were doing and uh, they encouraged us not to uh, uh, be coward and not to uh, back, uh, back down and uh, they told us they wish they could be like us. Once a doctor, always a doctor, the dentist Ochanji and the pharmacist Ondoro were not spared either from consultations. Uh, examined them, gave prescriptions where needed. They really assigned me to the health facility, so I was really in charge of the health facility at the prison. For some of the seven doctors, the toll their imprisonment had on their families was top of their minds at this point. My parents were affected a lot. My family, that's my immediate family. My mother was very affected. She cried a lot. She couldn't sleep that night. But my father was brave. And he was, you know, trying to encourage others and also to encourage me even when I came out, when he came to visit me in prison. My mom is in the church. Uh, I don't think at any one particular point she envisioned her son going to jail. Why yeah. didn't you want your mom to come and see you in prison? I thought that wasn't uh, befitting of, 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 that wasn't befitting of her, and I thought she would, she would break down. Yeah. And I didn't want to see her break down. For them, it, it was traumatizing also to the extent that here you are someone you know, someone you know who doesn't have a criminal record, and you're seeing them in, in a confined space. They were very much afraid 
because they thought maybe uh, I could be mistreated or I could be killed uh, for that matter. So I remember when they came to see me again, they didn't get a chance to see me. My father, I've not seen him look like that. And I, and I was telling my mom, no, don't allow him to come back. Yeah, it's okay. I know he's with me. Let him stand with me at home. And I don't want to see him like that. Let and let him not. And and through this whole process, I didn't want him to see me in the stripes. Let him just see me in, you know, my normal civilian clothes. Let him never see me in stripes. Hard as it was, prison life had begun with breakfast. It was a uh, white porridge without sugar, and it's really, really hot. And it's kept in these containers, metallic containers. There are no spoons. You know, I kept on asking, where are the spoons? And people are looking at me like, mm -mm -mm. Uh, Dr. Re, kunywa hivyo too. It's almost a sufuria, a small sufuria to your face. And then when I did that, I think that's when it hit me. Evelyn, you're actually in prison. They even feel that you you can't even use a spoon. They brought this big, huge bowl of white porridge with no sugar. And uh, I, I just remembered my childhood days. So I asked for a small cup, poured it, I just took the uji. As the seven settled in and started counting down their 30 days in jail, their case at the Court of Appeal was quickly gaining a life of its own. The hue and cry by the public could not be ignored. The judges spoke. They were to be released immediately to resume talks and end the strike. It was a moment of joy when I finally heard that you're going home. But you know, you don't want to keep your hopes up because now you're ready. You've already now mentally prepared for 30 days. I was ready to be in jail for a month. So when it came, the, the news came that we are being released, me, I was fine, kind of uh, discouraged. I felt bad. All these prisoners were telling me, ah, Dr. Wionaenda, Dr. Wionaenda. But then you don't see anything happening. The people are just there, you know? So until everyone was locked in. And I also went in, so I thought, ah, maybe I'm going to sleep here for another day. Our lawyers and the lawyers from the government side signed a consent to withdraw the case, and so we were uh, declared, you know, free. We were happy. With that confirmation, what followed was now the anxiety of waiting and waiting. It was almost unbearable. I was given time to go and clean my stuff, just arrange my clothes, and so I was ready. Now five is coming, there's no signal, so they take me in again. This moment of getting a letter of release, wow, that was also another anxious moment because the you realize that you've, okay, you've been informed and you've heard it on TV that already you are set free, but it's not over until it's over. I was locked in again at four. At that point, I stopped believing that actually we had been released. It was like another night in God. The warden called me, the lady in charge. Doubting Thomas is our Evelyn. Eh? So until she told me, that's now when I was now preparing. So you know, now I got anxious. Now I was just like, what time, what time, what time? From that 10 a.m., we were still in prison until 6 in the evening. Before long, the expected 30 days as guests of the state ended on day one, and their relief was obvious. I was so, like, uh, overwhelmed with, uh, with my feelings that uh, I can remember actually, I was about to take a shower, and I refused actually to take a shower. <laughs> I was just wondering, with 6 o'clock, will I be able to get out? I don't want them to go with the key and I'm still in here. <laughs> in my mind, when I was finally released at around six, and I was the first to come out, all I wanted was just to go home, freshen up, throw away these clothes and just relax. When you were released, you were very happy. And uh, we were happy because at least we knew you would come and conclude the process and finish the strike. I would go to jail a million times if it's the right thing to do. With that dramatic episode, Kenya cemented itself in history, having jailed its doctors. Dr. Masikorir, KTN News.